Hello, my name is Jeff Odell. I'm from Tampa, Florida in the USA. This video is for week five of the Introduction to Music Production course at Coursera.org. I will be demonstrating creating presets in FL Studio's 3D Parametric EQ2 to mimic the EQ settings on a typical channel strip in a hardware mixing console. Hardware vendors must make decisions on which kind of EQs to provide on a channel strip in a typical hardware mixing environment. Mimicking these settings in a digital audio workstation or DAW is a good starting point to learn how to apply EQ. So my goal here is to mimic the typical mixing board presets with Fruity Parametric EQ2 and demonstrates the capabilities of this plugin. At the bottom left of the screen, you'll see Fruity Parametric EQ2. You'll notice right away it's a seven band equalizer. Uh, each of those bands can be configured to be one of many types of EQ, either through a right-click menu or through scrolling up and down with the indicators here. And you can see that we're changing the type of EQ. And if you learn the icons, you'll know just by quickly visualizing what type of uh, EQ you've set. That's a lot of capability for an equalizer and can be a little overwhelming. Let's start by creating a preset that mimics our first filter on our channel strip, the high pass filter. And this is usually a switch, typically at the top of the channel switch, and it implements a high pass equalization uh, to take the lower frequencies, typically below the fundamental of whatever instrument or vocal is going through that channel. Everything below the fundamental is typically noise. Uh, microphone stand rumbling, car going by, air conditioning, etc. So the way we would do that with our Fruity Parametric EQ is first to realize we only need one of the EQ bands. So we can set the rest of these off by either changing their type to disabled by using the menu or changing their type to disabled by using the slider here. So let's just get rid of the others here and we'll keep the purple one. And the second thing we need to do is then set it to a high pass filter. And you'll notice we get the typical high pass filter slope where we're dropping the lower frequencies. Now the nature of that slope in this particular plugin is changed by the order setting. And the, you can experiment with these and get see the different kinds of drop offs that you get. The um, steep ones are rather steep and drop off suddenly. The one that seems fairly typical would be the gentle eight drop off, which kind of does a more gentle drop off of the frequencies as we get to our target. The other thing we need to do to mimic our high pass filter is to set that frequency. So the high pass filter on our typical board is set to 75 in our example. And now we have it. We have a high pass filter typical of what you'd find in position one of a, of a mixing board. The way we save that as a preset in FL Studio is to go to the plugin menu, go save preset as, and you'll see I already have named one here from working on the tutorial earlier. I'm calling it channel strip, position one, high pass, and we would save or replace that here. And now we have at our beck and call a uh, high pass filter that we can apply to a part. Using the same technique, I created presets for a low shelving filter in uh, the light purple, a low mid-range bell-shaped EQ, in the salmon color, the high mid-range bell-shaped EQ in the yellow color, and finally our high shelving filter in the light green color. And let me show you those. So our low shelving filter preset looks like this and will allow us to either accentuate or reduce the low end as well as determine what cutoff frequency we'd like to use for that. In addition, we have a low mid peak filter and notice this is a bell shaped filter. Again, we can adjust the frequency as well as attenuate the uh, volume of that frequency above or below neutral. Similarly, we have a preset for the high mid peak and really they're the same uh, typical thing. They just started at a, uh, another, another frequency level. And finally, our preset for high shelving filter, which allows us to accentuate or reduce the high frequencies with a shelving type curve. There are many other 
interesting features to parametric EQ2 that you can investigate. Most interesting probably being the ability to adjust the bandwidth, as well as to see a spectrum analysis right within the EQ, which you can observe as we play out to the end of the video. I hope this was helpful and thank you very much.